Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video, I'm gonna be kind of continuing an ongoing series where I solve some programming problems and do some coding interview preparation. Now, for any of you that don't know, if you're going to try to get a job at any high tech company, maybe Google, Facebook, any kind of the name brand companies, then you're going to have to pass a coding interview and they're notoriously difficult. Personally, I don't feel as though I am even ready to go for the coding interviews. So I've been practicing on a platform called Algo Expert. Now this is a paid platform. And what I'm gonna do in this video is go through some of the free questions with you guys to give you an idea of how this platform works, why I personally use this platform. I've been using it for about two months now. Um, and if you guys are interested in purchasing this and actually using this, there is a discount code in the description, full kind of transparency here. If you do buy this, I will make money from this. It's like, I think I make like 25 bucks or something for every time someone purchases this. So I'm being transparent with you guys, but personally I've been using this for two months. I highly recommend it. And I think it's 80, let's see how much it is. It's $85. So, I mean, if you guys really are trying to get into a high tech company or you just want to practice your coding skills, I can tell you this is one of the best ways to do it. And I know I messed with a ton of different websites before. Personally, this is my favorite and it has a ton of stuff on here, like interview tips where you can actually watch videos of this guy who will give you, uh, you know, some interview tips, tell you what it is you need to do to really land the job. And then data structures apparently is coming soon. Anyways, they've been adding a bunch of stuff to this since I've been using it. But today what we're going to do is solve the nth Fibonacci problem. So I'm going to click on this one. It's a free problem. I'm not even signed into my account here. And we're just going to go through and solve it. I'm going to talk about my solution. Um, notice that this was one of the easier questions. So I would recommend you guys try to solve this first. You can either do this on the website just by hitting the link. This is a free question again, so you don't have to pay for it to do it. And you guys will see as I go through this kind of how the website works and how everything operates. All right. So what is the problem we're going to solve? Well, the Fibonacci sequence is defined as follows. The first number of the sequence is zero, the second number is one, and the nth number is the sum of n minus one and n minus two numbers. Write a function that takes in an integer n and returns the nth Fibonacci number. Okay, so here's an example. So for any of you that don't understand kind of how this works, the sequence goes essentially like this. So you have one, one are your first, or sorry, zero, one, one. Those are your first three numbers in the sequence where that's one, that's two, that's three, I believe. Then you have two and what how you get two is you add the previous two numbers then you get what is it three because you added two and one and then you get five and then you would get eight and you can see that we're kind of exponentially increasing upwards so essentially it's asking us to find a solution and i'll zoom in on this so you guys can actually read my code to this problem you guys can see there's actually some hints here i don't want to read them because i'm going to try to do it without the hints but if you're stuck you can use those uh, you can save your answer by hitting this thing and then you can actually just test it by hitting run code and it will tell you if you failed or passed these test cases and then down here is actually an explanation of how to do this um, we're not going to watch that because i'm going to explain it to you guys but for all these questions there is explanations so let's go ahead and get started so this is actually a recursive problem now we don't necessarily need to do this um, using recursion but we are going to i'm going to do the trivial solution first and then i'm going to show you a better way of solving this that runs in a faster time so essentially whenever we're solving something recursive what we need to do is determine our base case and then our other case now we could have more than one base case but essentially what a base case is is a solution that we know the answer to so when we call nth fibonacci on a number like five, we don't actually know the answer to five, but we don't know what the fifth number in the sequence is. What we do know though, is what the first, second, and third number in the sequence are. They're these numbers, right? Zero, one, one. So what we can do is simply write in this um, Fibonacci thing, what we know to start. So in this case, if N is less than or equal to three, actually, sorry, if N equals equals one, return zero. If n equals equals, or I guess is less than or equal to three, return one, because we know that that's the number in the sequence. Now, how do we calculate it if it's not one of these two values? Well, this is where we get into the recursive part. What we need to do essentially is calculate the previous value and the previous value before that and add them together. Well, the logical way to do this is to return the get nth Fibonacci of n minus one plus the get nth Fibonacci of n minus two. Now you might be like, well, how is this gonna work if we don't know what these values are? Well, essentially what's gonna happen is when we call this return statement, we will call the function get nth Fibonacci and look for an answer from it. Now, if it doesn't know any of these answers, well, it's gonna go back again and try to find the answer to whatever that sequence is that we call it. So if we call it with four, well, obviously that's not here, 
then what's going to happen is it's going to return three plus two. So get the nth Fibonacci of three plus two. Obviously, we know the answer of three and we know the answer of two, which is one, which is going to return to us then two, which would be the correct answer. Now, if we're going to call three, what would happen here? Actually, I'm going to get my drawing tablet out to do a little illustration, but then I'll show you how this works. Okay, so I've got my drawing tablet out here now, and I just want to explain to you how this code works before I actually run it and show you really how this works. And you can see obviously here, this is highlighted green. I just tested it to make sure I wasn't misleading you guys, but I was fairly confident in that answer. So I just want to explain how this little piece of code can actually generate um, this sequence that we're talking about here. Now, essentially, the way that this works is just using a very basic recursive principle. Now, hopefully you guys know about recursion, but if you don't, I'm going to kind of explain what that means, but essentially recursion is just calling the same function within that function. So if I ever make a call in here that calls the function that like we're making the call from, that's known as a recursive call, which is exactly what we've done here. So essentially I'm just going to draw kind of the stack or like the trace of what this is going to look like. So let's say we call n Fibonacci of four. So we'll just call, we'll just say like we want to calculate the value four from nth Fibonacci. Well, is four equal to one? No, is four equal to three or less than three? No, it's not. So what do we do? We return this recursive sequence. Now, what is this recursive sequence actually going to give to us? How does this work? Well, we need to start by evaluating this. So we need to get the nth Fibonacci number of n minus one. Now, well, what is that? Well, n minus one is obviously going to be three. So we can write three here. We know get fib is going to be two. So, and we know based on the sequence that that should technically give us the correct answer because the value of three plus the value of two in the sequence will give us the right answer. Okay, well, how do we get three? Well, what happens is we come here, we do the nth Fibonacci of three, and we see that it is less than or equal to three. So what we do is we return one, right? So what we do then is we say that the nth Fibonacci here is equal to one. We'll add a plus sign. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get the nth Fibonacci of two. Well, how do we get the nth Fibonacci of two? We come here, we see that it is indeed less than three. I don't know why my circle is so messed up there. And what we do is we return one, so we get one. Now one plus one equals two. So our answer is returned from the fourth sequence as the value two, which is correct because obviously zero, one, two, three, but it, we could go one, two, three, four, which is gonna give us the answer of two. Now it was a pretty trivial example of how this actually gives us that answer for four. But let's try giving the answer for uh, five. And how can we do five? Because five will be a little bit more complicated. So we're looking for five, we'll put our five over here. So what we're gonna do on our first call here is we're gonna return the get Fibonacci of four and the get Fibonacci of three. Well, what is the get Fibonacci of four? Well, if we run that, what that actually is equal to uh, why can I not erase this one second? If we run that, well, it's not less than three. It's not less than one. We actually need to return this whole statement again. So what I'm going to do is just draw a branch to illustrate that when we call get Fibonacci of four, what we actually end up returning is the, well, I'm just going to say get um, fib just to shorten the function name, but it's the same thing. So the get fib of three plus the get fib of two right? Because when we call four, well, four comes up here, then we're going to do the three, and then we're going to do the two. So we need to return that first. So we're going to kind of dig deeper in there and figure out what those smaller answers are to build our way up into the bigger answer. So let's erase this. So we have get fib of three plus get fib of two. Now, when we call this, what do we get? Well, we know that three is one and we know that two is one. So our value here is two. So the get Fibonacci of four now actually evaluates to two, right? That's our answer for that part. Now, what is the get Fibonacci of three? Well, that's one. So we have two plus one. And then our answer is equal to three. So you can see that when we call something and we don't have this trivial base case as the answer, what we do is we have a recursive call, which means we call the function again twice to get the two previous values. Now, if when we call that twice, we still don't know the answer to that, we call it another two times and another two times and another two times until eventually we reach a case where we know the answer, which is our base case, and then we return all those values upwards to get our final answer. And that is kind of how recursion works. Now, if you want to really see how it works, what you can do is put print statements inside your recursive uh, function so that you can kind of get an idea of when it's actually being called and how it's being called. But that is pretty much the answer. Now, because some of you guys are still here, what I'm going to do is actually explain to you why this is kind of slow and another way that we can actually do this not using recursion. Now, 
what's actually going to end up happening when we do this, and some of you may have realized, is we're going to calculate the same numbers a lot of times. So let's say we do this get Fibonacci call here and we call it with five and four. So get Fibonacci of five, get Fibonacci of four. Well, to calculate the Fibonacci of five, we need to know the calculation of Fibonacci of four. But here we're calculating Fibonacci of four again. So what we're going to do is calculate the Fibonacci of four in this call, and then we're going to recalculate it again in this call. Now, obviously, as we kind of go up higher, 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 higher in numbers, this is going to mean we're doing a lot of calculations the same time. So multiple times, so we don't need to be doing that. What we can actually do is use a for loop and a hash table to make this a lot faster. So I'm going to run through that solution quickly. And if you guys understand that solution, I'm going to assume you probably don't need a lengthy explanation. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, first of all, I'll just show you that when I did run these test cases, um, so run code, we do get perfect answer, which means, you know, I've done this correctly, but let's do it a different way now and just say how we can solve this a little bit more efficiently. So I'm going to say, uh, calculated equals and a new hash table in this case a dictionary whatever you want to call it okay so sorry i said i was going to calculate this using a for loop but i'm actually still going to do this recursively uh, but what i'm going to do is just change something so we actually store all of the values that we've already calculated in a dictionary or a hash table and then pass that through every time to our function and just reference that hash table to see if uh what do you call it? we've already calculated that value so the way i'm going to do this is just say calculated equals and I'm going to set this as an optional parameter just so I don't have to do anything globally because I don't want to do that. I'm going to say it's equal to a blank hash. Now what I'm going to do is simply say if n in calculated return calculated n. Now what this is going to do is simply look in this hash that we have here in this dictionary. I'm just going to keep calling it um, different words apparently and see if we've already calculated this value. If we have, if there's anything in here, we'll simply return that. So what I'm going to do is actually start by setting uh, zero colon, uh, or I guess we're going to say one colon zero, um, two colon one, three colon one, because we know those values. So these will all like always be calculated pretty much. And then we'll pretty much say that if it's not in calculated, what we're going to do is return the get nth fib of whatever it is, or sorry, not return, we're going to say calculated n equals get Fibonacci number of n minus one plus get n fib of n minus two. Then what we're going to do is return calculated n. Now, the way that this is going to work is essentially say if we've reached a point where we know the calculation of this, we'll return it. But if we don't, what we'll do is we'll store that calculation and we'll actually need to pass calculated here every single time. Otherwise, this won't work like that. So we'll pass calculated through as the new parameter because now we've changed it. We've added a key to it and we'll store that value. So we'll say, you know, nth Fibonacci of index five or whatever in the sequence is equal to this. So that means any time now from one of these previous calls that we call this value, we'll actually get the answer immediately returned to us rather than having to do another recursive sequence, which means that this can run much, much faster. So, I mean, if I run this code, you can see that we're still passing. Everything is still working. But if you actually look at the time that it takes to run this on a very large number of n, then this will be much, much faster than if we do it the other way around because we're storing those calculated values. So anyways, I think I'm probably going to leave it here because I assume that most of you understand how this works. If you got this far in the video and you're still going, obviously this guy down here um, is can explain everything to you. It's 31 minute video going through the solution for this get Fibonacci. There's even a go to code walkthrough uh, where he explains everything that he's going to do. You can even see his solution, I think, which is right here. So he had the same one uh, for me to start. But I mean, you know, we just sped this up a little bit by doing something and, and storing the values. So anyways, that has been it for this video. If you guys want to practice along on this platform, you'd like to purchase this. I do have a discount code below. I think it's for 10%. You can go to algoexpert.io slash tech with Tim, and that will give you the discount for this site.